Welcome to the Women Leaders Association podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. Be sure to tune in each week to hear an empowering message from the world's top women executives, trailblazers, entrepreneurs, and all around fierce female leaders. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I will be taking you on a deep dive of each message to equip you with the principles, strategies, and tools you need to start crushing your goals, increasing your impact, creating work-life harmony. And did I mention have more fun? Because when you love what you do, you do it better. The Women Leaders Association is the world's largest women executives association with over 30,000 women in executive and leadership positions who are committed to the development and advancement of women in the corporate arena. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association chapter, would enjoy daily podcasts, or you desire to become a part of the Women's Mastermind Group near you, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. On today's episode, you're going to hear from Jenny Herkelrode. She's an author, speaker, and a mind change expert. Jenny's also a mother of four, which is her greatest claim to fame. Jenny is a big hearted entrepreneur and business leader. She built a business in San Diego over 13 years, producing double digits in the millions. With the power of the mind, Jenny overcame her past of chronic pain, addictions, bad relationships, and unhappiness. She never knew how sweet life could be until she changed her mind, and that changed everything. Now here's Jenny. What about at work? How can changing your thinking help you professionally? Well, again, if you have fear or worry or stress, you can turn it into peace and confidence. If you've got disagreements, you can turn them into understanding. If you've got lack of confidence, you can turn it into courage. If you've got frustration, you can turn it to collaboration. If you've got anger, you can turn it to patience. If you've got confusion, you can switch it to clarity. If you're stuck, you can become productive and creative. If you have some big career goals, you can turn those into your reality. You can turn burnout and focus into energy. Did you know you could do all that with your own mind? All right. Here's how I learned this. It wasn't in a book. I wish it was. That might have been the easier way to learn this. But this was me on August 10th of 2013. I was hiking. Uh, with my husband and kids, and I was standing on this mountain ledge looking down, and my husband says, if I was young and in shape, I would jump off of here. And I was like, well, I'm young and in shape. And I jumped. Like, I didn't even think about it. And when I landed on that rock that I'm laying on, I heard a crunch in my back, and I fell, and I couldn't move. And uh, so he called 911 after they tried to get me out and couldn't. And they sent in this ground crew. And if you look down below at the trails, like they had to hike in. This took a while. And I was telling Megan, there were literally vultures circling me because I was screaming for so long. Yeah. So they get to me and guess what they say? Uh, You need life flight. (laughs) You think? Yeah. So life flight came. That's me. I don't know if I'm blocking the camera here, dangling from from a helicopter. There's a doctor attached to me. I didn't even realize that till I got this picture. I'm like, who's, who's hanging on there? Yeah. There's a doctor attached. Uh, When I got up there to that uh, helicopter, they pumped me with morphine, which thank goodness for morphine. (laughs) Um, And the next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital and they said, "Uh, you broke your back, back, bad day. Yeah. And I said, does that mean I can't go to Ashtanga yoga tonight? And they said, yes, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Uh, thankfully, I wasn't paralyzed. But, you know, when your back's broken, you can't really move. So I was stuck in bed for a long time. And then I started trying all these natural ways to heal because I'm kind of a natural healer kind of girl. Right. My dad's a chiropractor. I thought, you know, I can I can heal naturally. And so every day I saw somebody and did my best to heal And unfortunately, my pain kept getting worse instead of better. And so a couple years in, a couple years later, we tried this. So I got some rods and screws and a synthetic disc in my back and they come on a walker and back brace. And guess what? Didn't help. So now what do we do? So they said, how about some of these? (laughs) Try some pain pills. Those are all different pills I was prescribed. And the reason they're dumped in my garden is because I met this guy. 
This guy's name is Dr. Warren Jacobs. He's a medical doctor, a regular medical doctor. And he was working with patients in his practice for many decades and found that sometimes he couldn't help them. He couldn't fix them and he didn't know why. And so he started to learn that the mind could control the body. And so I went to see him and he said, you know, you can fix your back with your mind. And I was like, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, this is like, this is literally my back. Like, here's my medical file, right? Like, it's fused. Like, I mean, I, he said, okay, well, there's the door. And I go, no, 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 no. Okay, let's try your woo-woo, voodoo, whatever you do. Um, six sessions later, there I am with my best friend on Mission Bay doing handstands and backbends. Healed. What? My mind just healed my body. I was fascinated. So I went back to him and I said, so um, can you help me fix my pain pill addiction and my bad marriage and my bad temper and my unhappiness and help me find my purpose and succeed in a new career? <laughs> he said, yes. And so we did. And that's why I'm here today, because I was able to heal myself with his help through the power of my mind. And now I like teaching people how to do the same thing. Because life's way better when your mind is right. And your mind is right when it's aligned with what you want in your life. And sometimes that takes a little while to discover. And that's something we can talk about too. So I sold my real estate company. That's what I was doing at the time. I had a big real estate company. I had a team of buyers, agents, and secretaries. And we were producing double digits in the millions. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But you know what I told myself? suck it up. I mean, gosh, it's going so well. You can juggle your kids. I mean, it's great. Yeah, I would tell myself, but I don't like it. And I would tell myself, too bad for you, right? Now you got the houses and the cars and you got to pay for all the stuff and you got this, everybody thinks you're whatever, you know, you got to live up to this. Yeah, but I don't like it. Too bad, I'd tell myself. Keep doing it. I got rid of the real estate company and now I'm going to teach you what I learned. The first thing is called the 17 second rule. A thought is an electrical signal in your brain for 17 seconds. That all, that's all it is, an electrical signal. But when it goes on for more than 17 seconds, it becomes a chemical reaction within your body. So you start to feel equal to the way you're thinking. When you feel equal to the way you're thinking, it attracts like thoughts. So you can prove to yourself why what you're thinking is true, a feedback loop. When this goes on for more than 68 seconds, it changes your energy field. Your energy field is your vibration. Your vibration is what attracts things into your life. So if you want to manifest something positive, you need to think positive things. So you have positive thoughts, you have positive energy. If you think something negative, it brings in negative thoughts and negative vibrations and pulls in negative things into you. It's not woo-woo. It's science. It's fascinating. So the moral of the story, how long can you think something negative? 17 seconds. That's how long you have to entertain a negative thought before it becomes a chemical reaction and turns into how you feel. What's up, ladies? Julianne here. We are about to go deeper. I love this topic so much. The brain, just as the organ itself and the mind, it's so fascinating to me. You see, uh, four years ago, I lost my dad to a very aggressive form of Alzheimer's when he was just 63 years old. Y'all, he was so in his prime. He was full of energy and life and his brain just started to disappear like physically holes were developing in his brain and his mental faculties were going away. And I learned going through that process for him with him where, you know, he couldn't recognize people anymore and he couldn't remember things and he couldn't remember how to tie his shoe and all, all of these horrible th things to experience with somebody you love. Right. But I knew that, something good would come out of it. That's just what I believe. And although 
he did not make it through having Alzheimer's. I, I knew the good that would come out of it would be understanding that we can never take for granted our ability to choose one thought over another. And through that whole process, learning that, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, this is the lesson. I have the ability to choose one thought over another. And while I do, I'm going to make sure to implement that in every single area of my life. And this is why I'm so passionate about helping my clients learn how to create thoughts that actually serve them. We have between 50,000 and 80,000 thoughts per day. And according to psychologists, 80% of those thoughts are negative. And 90% of those thoughts are just a repeat from yesterday. It blows my mind. Ladies, our brains work like supercomputers. They want to run efficiently. They want to use the least amount of energy possible. And what requires less energy? Blazing a new path of a thought and you know new changes where challenges can come up and you haven't seen stuff before and, and you have to figure things out? Or is it easier to keep running down the same thought path that you've always been on where you know the terrain? And the road is well-worn and it's familiar. Our brain will always choose the path of least resistance. It will choose to go with what it knows because it requires very little effort. Your sweet brain and mine was built to protect us, to conserve energy. However, for most of us, we are not, you know, running from lions, tigers, and bears, and trying to survive in a cave. I mean, metaphorically, maybe some of us are going through that, you know, but you get it. Our brains are capable to achieve so much more. We simply need to reprogram it. If you are not yet a member of the Women Leaders Association, I want to encourage you to check it out. All the speakers you hear from on this show you get access to their full speech with our membership daily podcast and hearing the full version of this talk today of Jenny's full talk is worth the price of admission. It's so good. When we start to understand how our brain works and how we can create new thoughts, which in turn create how we feel, which in turn create the actions we take, which in turn creates the life that we are living. How much power did you just give yourself permission to, to take? I mean, it's huge. And we try and downplay it. Oh, no, you know, I can't help the way I feel. Yes, you can. Okay. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But let's go through what Jenny talks about. She goes on to talk about these three secrets of what is required to change your thoughts. And of course, I'm going to share with you like the golden nugget takeaways from these three secrets right here, right now, because that's just how I do. Okay. So secret number one, you have two minds. Many of us have heard this before. You have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is that active thoughts that you are aware of and your subconscious mind, which it does so much more than keep those auto responses happening within your body, you know, like breathing, heartbeat, all that kind of stuff. Yes, it does those things, but it does so much more. I like to think of the subconscious mind as your storehouse. This is where all your old belief systems and your habits, all of those live within the storehouse. Okay. So your subconscious mind controls your habitual thinking. All right. Have you ever been driving into work and you forgot how you got there? We say, oh, I was just, you know, running on autopilot. 
that's your subconscious mind. Okay. It is running on that habit, that path of least resistance. It doesn't have to think. It doesn't have to pull in those active thought processes. So it's easy to run efficiently. It doesn't have to work so hard. It knows the territory. Okay. Your brain loves to run on the subconscious mind. It's very Little energy is required to function on habit nature, okay? And here is where this process can become problematic. Let's say you don't like how things are going in your life. Your conditions and circumstances always seem to be against you. You feel stuck in a rut. You're tired of being in the same place this year that you were last year. You desire more out of your life but you can't seem to figure out how to get it and or how to maintain it. It's your storehouse, okay? Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. He also said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Y'all, there is no judgment here, okay? I have been there too. And we don't know what we don't know. But once we know better, we can do better. The number one compliment I receive is I love your energy and the joy you exude. Like no matter what's going on in your life, you always just seem so positive and happy. I love that compliment. It fills my heart with so much joy. And I'm so grateful when I hear those encouraging words because the road I traveled on to get to this point where I am living out of this energy and out of this excitement and zeal for life, it was freaking hard. (laughs) I have been through some ish, as many of you have. I didn't have it easy. I still don't have it easy. I have six kids. I don't have it easy. But I stopped looking for easy to be the key that I needed to be able to unlock the joyful way of living. Like no matter what life throws at me, I had to stop looking for easy to be the answer. And how did I do it? The same way Jenny talks about in secret number two our subconscious mind, AKA the storehouse. Your subconscious mind, your storehouse, it starts being established from when you're in utero to about seven and eight years old, okay? Our brain development during this time is designed to be downloading the programming, if you will, right? We said our brains are supercomputers, During this time of life, you are your experiences, your relationships, your language, your fears, your outlooks on life, all of it that you're experiencing through these first fundamental years of life are creating the programming that you will in turn run on from here on out. Okay. And it develops this program and it puts it in the storehouse, right? And then I like to think of it as the doors get locked, the windows get shut, (laughs) and there it is. There you go. There's your thought processes. There's your belief system. And this will get you through the rest of your life, okay? Now, I think we all know that that doesn't serve us well if we want anything else out of life than what we've always gotten, okay? And so... Back to the question of, okay, well, Julian, how do you, how do you live this way? Like, how is this your being, this, this high energy, this positive nature? Because y'all, I don't believe in just like slapping a smiley face sticker on it and just saying, okay, well, be positive. No, I want to live it. Even when things are hard, even when things come against me. Okay. And it all goes back to unlocking my storehouse. Easy was not the key. 
It took hard work, intentionality, drive, and what I like to refer to as the overcomer's outlook. The overcomer's outlook is simply this. I have an obstacle before me. Now, how can I look at it so that this obstacle can be for me? You see what I did there? Played on those words a little bit. Hey, the obstacle doesn't change. The circumstances don't change. Your past doesn't change. What changes is your perception of the obstacle. The perception of it being a stumbling block to now being a stepping stone. And it took my dad dying from Alzheimer's and this newly developed irrational fear that my own life was running out of time. I started getting really irritated and antsy about things. My impatient level was through the roof. Um, And it was because when everything broke down, that's that's what I picked. That That was my Siri. She agrees. But when everything broke down, that's what was left. That's, That's what was in the storehouse was this new belief system of your dad died when he was just 63 years old. He didn't get to accomplish the things that he wanted to accomplish in his life. Same thing's going to happen to you. Okay. And I say irrational because that's, that's pretty irrational, right? But that's, those thoughts were so constant in my mind that they, they lasted way more than 17 seconds. So they created this chemical reaction in my body. So I started to feel certain ways. And then I started to act on those feelings. And I started to try to prove and how I was living out my life that my belief system that my time was running out was true. And that's what we do. And that's how we take a new belief system and lock it away in the storehouse. We think on it over and over and over and over again until it becomes how we feel, until it becomes how we act because we want to prove ourselves correct. And once it gets in the storehouse, our brain's like, sweet, I know how to operate from here on out. No worries, here we go. And it just goes and it follows the pattern and it follows that habit, okay? So going on this intentional journey to unlock my storehouse and deprogram my mind and my thoughts and my beliefs deprogram all of those things that were no longer serving me and no longer serving the person that I desired to become the best version of myself, the best mom, the best wife, the best um, entrepreneur, the best author, the best speaker, the best anything that I desired in my life. If What was in my storehouse, the programming in my storehouse was not serving that desire. I had to get it out. Okay. Here's what happens. People tend to get so focused on understanding why they are the way that they are. And although that's, that's the initial driving force, right? You need to kind of understand like, why, why? That's what drove me. Why? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I acting this way? What's going on? Okay. That was the initial driving force, but it can't be the ultimate goal. Discovering why is one thing. Course correcting your default programming, that programming that's established in those early years of life, that's altogether something completely different. And the truth is, even if you understand the why behind your early years programming. It doesn't mean you can't still change how you move forward in life. Revisiting your past for understanding and healing is so valuable. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But having that be what has to happen in order for you to change how you think now is not the whole truth. Does it help? 
Absolutely. Do you have to get to the bottom of things and heal completely from it before you can start changing the way you think? Absolutely not. I wonder if you would be willing to be open enough to allow me to expand your mind just for a few minutes. This is also secret number three that Jenny offers up. You have the ability to change your thoughts and upgrade your habits and upgrade your life by choosing one thought over another on a consistent basis as you begin to reprogram your mind. You see, the truth is you get to choose from this moment on to think and respond as if you are completely healed and as if you did get to the bottom of things. Because the truth is, all of it exists in the past. And you're not changing the past. And you're not in your future yet. You are simply right here. And your future does not know the difference between if you choose right now to make a decision based on the thoughts you're choosing to think versus the thoughts that you're thinking by default. Who you are tomorrow is because of the thoughts you're thinking today. But who you are tomorrow doesn't know the difference between if you've decided to create a thought or if the thought arrived by default. Are you following? Opening up to it? It's like mind-blowing, right? Oh, I love this stuff. It's so fascinating to me. If we can step back emotionally for a minute and actually try and take time to think about what we have been thinking about without trying to label it. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is toxic right? All those those hot button words that we like to label things, okay? If we just, if we step back and remove all of that and allow ourselves to see and really think about what we're thinking about for what it is, it's just a thought, which for the first 17 seconds is simply an electrical signal, If you don't want that thought to make you feel bad or to lower your energy level, right? Lower your vibe. Okay. You got to get it out within 17 seconds. You have to be paying attention to how you're thinking. And remember, your brain likes to run on the subconscious habitual default line, right? That path is easy. There's no resistance. Forcing your brain to think, kicking it on almost every 17 seconds, (laughs) right? When you're having those thoughts, that's hard work and it makes your brain think. But then and only then are you able to reframe or completely cut off any negative thoughts that come into your mind. And that's how I did it. I possess this level of energy and this enthusiasm, not because I'm faking it till I make it, not because I think I should, not because it's somebody else's expectation of me, but because I decided who I wanted to become. And I asked myself the question, okay, future me, how does she respond? Future me, how does she show up in relationships? How does she show up to work? How does she show up in life? And I I gathered all that information from my best future self. And I brought it back to where I was right then and there and said, okay, how does she think? What are her thought processes? 
So now when a negative thought comes in, because I'm human and they still do, when they come in, I'm quick to get them. And I either cut them off or I reframe them. Because it's exhausting to try and be someone you're not. I am all for authenticity. You give me somebody who is real and authentic, you're my people. That's who I want to hang out with. I don't I don't trust people who have it all together because <laughs> it's a lie. Nobody has it all together. They might present like they do, you know, on the high right a highlight reel of life. But you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what they've been through. Like, let's stop comparing ourselves to other people, first and foremost. And then let's get really honest and intentional about the kind of person that we want to show up to be and how we can start living into that max potential of our life. You know, over the past few episodes, We've been talking about imposter syndrome and how it plagues so many ambitious women that are striving for more. But what if we stopped the story that we've been playing in our head? What if we rewrote that story that's been playing in our head that we're not good enough? We're not worthy. Oh, this is only happening because X, Y, Z. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. What if we chose to honor ourselves for all the hard that we've had to overcome? What if we chose to celebrate ourselves for everything that we've been able to accomplish? What if we really started to change the narrative? What term could we call that? How about we make that the goal? And y'all, it's not easy. I had help. I still have a coach. I still am involved in mastermind groups. Because when you begin to change how you think and create intentional thoughts that are going to serve you becoming the best version of you, the thoughts that are going to help you create and achieve things that you never thought were possible, You need to be around other people that are doing the same thing because this way of being is not common practice yet. Perhaps together we can change that. Perhaps together we can start to rewrite the narrative and change how women are showing up, how women are perceived as leaders. And you don't have to wear a suit and black pumps and, you know, do X, Y, Z. Because a leader is only a leader if somebody is following you. John Maxwell says, but I think it's based on uh, some old Chinese proverb. I'm not quite sure. But he says, a leader is a leader if someone is following you. Other than that, a leader is simply someone who's taking a walk. And it's so true. We get so tied up in all of these labels. Oh, I'm the CEO. Oh, I'm this position. Oh, I am this kind of leader. A leader is somebody who has influence. And my friend, you have influence. You have the ability to influence for good or for bad. And you are doing that whether you're aware of it or not. And oftentimes the influence is coming from the energy you carry, the vibration that you carry, which is created through how you're feeling, which is created through the thoughts that you're thinking. So you want to have more influence. You want to have more connection with people. You have to start with what you've been thinking about. Get really intentional. And together, I do believe that we can start to rewrite this story. All right, my friends, that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed today's episode, would you shoot me a message over on Instagram? We have a new Instagram up. It's called Women Leaders Podcast. 
and tell me how you're going to start thinking about what you're thinking about. Or feel free to ask any kind of questions about, well, I, I'm confused on my default line. I don't, I don't know what, what lies in my storehouse. This is all new to me. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. And if you're wanting more, more connection, more support, more accountability, more resources, then I want to encourage you to go check out womenleaderspodcast.com where you can find how you become a member of any of our chapters, which we have over 80 throughout the country in all different cities, how you can join with one of our mastermind groups or our networking groups, because we truly believe that we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. That's all for today, my friends. Bye for now.